everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs, and I have a beautiful gatefold Christmas card to show you today. It's a very fancy card. We've got some embossing, and look at this. I'm going to show you how to use our new embossing mat. The stamp set is called Feathers and Frost, and we're using this big image as well as the Joy. We're also going to use these tiny little sprigs here and this one that says, End Peace to Your Heart. All right, let's start with the embossed piece first. You're gonna need a piece of cherry cobbler and your stamp. You're also going to need your embossing buddy and your Versamark. Versamark ink is what you need when you emboss and that's gonna help the embossing powder stick um, nicely to your image. It's kind of a sticky ink. Before you actually stamp, you wanna take your embossing buddy and get a little bit of that powder and rub it across your paper. This is going to remove any static that you might have on there that would hold those little embossing crystals in places where we don't want them. All right, so take your Versamark and ink your stamp really well and then stamp it right on your cardstock get lots of pressure. We want to make sure we get all the, the, all of the stamp in the right places. We want this powder to stick well. Now I'm going to take my gold embossing powder. I have it in an old stamp case. I can use it as the tray to hold it and to be able to tap all of the extra off. So pour it on there and then just tap, 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 and you can see that it is all stuck there. Now it's not done yet, we have to heat it. And you have to use a heat tool. And this is Stampin' Up's heat tool. And it does take a few minutes. It takes the, the heat tool about 30 seconds to, to really heat up and get to the right temperature. But once it does, you will see this gold powder, there we go, turn to shiny gold. Can you see that? Isn't it magical? It really is fun. Now don't hold your heat tool uh, still in the same place. It'll it'll burn your cardstock if you leave it in one place too long. So kind of go back and forth and just brush over your image until you have everything set. There we go. Now you do want to give it about 10 seconds to really firm up so that it's not liquidy. Um, it is kind of a a, a liquid before it's it sets it cools off so just about 10 seconds really all right now I'm going to color in some of these uh, leaves with Vegas gold shimmer paint and the bef the first time I do it I'm going to take my um, aqua painter and go straight into the lid I want some of them really dark and we're going to water it down in a minute for some of the other leaves. So just take it and kind of do however many leaves you want. I kind of think maybe about half of them. Now it will take some time for the shimmer paint to dry. So you do need to give it some time, you know, four or five minutes probably. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? This just makes a really, really fancy and eye-opening card. I think people who would receive this card in the mail at Christmas would, would probably gasp when they saw it because it's just so beautiful. All right, now I'm gonna take one of my blocks and just kind of squirt a little bit of water down there like that. You can tell where my gold shimmer was from last time. I have one block set aside for this, um, but you can use just a silicone mat or even a paper plate if you wanted to. And just kind of mix it all around. I've got a paper towel here so I can wipe it off because I want it to get kind of um, a little bit more translucent than the original, but I don't want my brush to be drippy at all. All right, so just a light. Well, that still seems a little too dark. Let's see, there we go. That seems a little bit better. So have a paper towel close, and that's gonna give us kind of a two-tone gold look on our leaves. Christmas is a great time to pull out your gold 
products. We've got Stampin' Up! has lots of gold items. We've got gold foil paper. We've got our Vegas gold shimmer paint, of course. We've got gold shimmer paper. It's a, it's a great time to use all those metallic and sparkly things. All right, did I miss any? Nope, okay, I'm gonna let it sit and dry for a little while. And while I'm doing that, let's, before we put this away, let's stamp the joy. Here's the little joy right here. And, or the little circle right here. This is the smallest, smallest stitched shape circle cut in very vanilla. And I'm gonna just stamp the joy in cherry cobbler right in the middle. And then, but wait, we're gonna take this and we're going to just tap, tap, tap. Let's get a little bit of a darker one. Tap, 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 tap. And you can even flick it. I don't know where my aqua painter lid is. That's my favorite way to use it. See how I did that? Just flick it. So that's, it's sparkly too. So we'll set that aside to dry and clean up our aqua painter for just a minute. We're not quite done with the aqua painter and the gold um, shimmer, but we're gonna set it aside for just a second. Let me show you the inside of this card while we're waiting for the front to dry. See how this little scalloped square here is embossed? I'm gonna show you how to do that, and then we're gonna stamp and do some more embossing. That um, embossed image was created with a scallop square framelit, just like this. This is what we use to cut scallop squares. But Stampin' Up! has a new product called the Embossing Mat, and it comes with a, a thin mat and a thick mat. Today we're gonna use the thin one, as well as the cutting pad. And so, to do all of this, we're gonna set the clear plate first, then we're gonna get our four inch by five and a fourth piece of very vanilla and we're going to get that scalloped square framelit and set it in the center and we're going to flip it over because we want the cutting surface to be up at the top so i'm going to take a little bit of washi to stick this on you could also use post-it notes we don't want anything that's going to tear our paper when we take it off and then we're going to flip it over okay and we're gonna put that silicone mat right on top. And then that standard or that embossing precision plate. And it's gonna go right on top. And I'm gonna run it through and let's take a look at it. Oops, see, you can see on the back, it did not cut. So let's look, ah, oh, there we go, perfect. All right, let me get all of this out of the way so you can see just how awesome this is. I'm running out of space. All right, isn't that neat? It doesn't cut, it just embosses. Think of the possibilities with all of your um, framelits that you could use now to emboss. So that's the new embossing mat. All right, so let's add a little bit of gold here as well. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get that embossing, buddy. Get rid of all the static. Then I'm gonna take those little tiny, looks like I didn't get them out, so let me pull them out, those little tiny sprigs. And I'm gonna stamp one up here in the corner, like that, and one here, like that. And then let's bring back our gold embossing powder and we're just gonna repeat the process that we did with our square. Tap it off, get all the extras, and bring back the heat tool. Now these are really going to look different just because they're on very vanilla cardstock. The gold looks different depending on what color you stamp it on. It really pops off that, that cherry cobbler. And it just is very classical and beautiful here on the Very Vanilla. All right, let's bring this back. Color these in. I'm even gonna do the little, 
the little berry too. All right, we are done with that. And now let me get my Cherry Cobbler ink pad and stamp the rest of our sentiment right here in the middle. And peace to your heart. All right, I think we might be ready to put our card together. Let me clear off my mess and let's do that. Now our card base is eight and a half by five and a half and I have scored it at two and an eighth and four and a fourth. And you're gonna fold it over like a normal card and then fold this side back, all right? Um, let's put the inside first since we have it sitting here. This piece of very vanilla. Right there. Beautiful. Now I've got a piece of DSP that measures two by five and three eighths. And this is the um, Festive Farmhouse DSP. Right there. All right, now we need to cut out our beautiful our beautiful little wreath. All right, I'm switching out with my magnetic platform because this time we need it to hold our larger scalloped square in place. Right there, we need it to be perfect right around our image. So put that top plate back on there and let's take a look. Lovely, isn't that awesome? That scalloped square really fits this this uh, stamped image perfectly. All right, now I have done a little bit of cutting ahead of time and I have my gold banner. So we're going to put our gold banner, this is the gold foil. I cut it with one of the banners from the Bunch of Banners framelits. I'm gonna put that there. And then another dimensional here in the middle for our joy. So pretty. And the last thing we need to do is to attach this here in the center. So we're just gonna put adhesive right here on the side, and I think I'm gonna put it on the back of the scallop square. And we want to center it so that it covers that one just like that. And there you go. Isn't that stunning? I hope you like it. Make sure you follow the link on my blog back over, or the link in the description back over to my blog. I have a PDF for this project right here. This was originally done during Facebook Friday, and I also have two other projects featuring this fun Feathers and Frost stamp set. All right, let me know if you have questions. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.